Hey there, everybody. Welcome to the lab today. My name is Kieran. I am so happy that you're joining me. Can you recognize what, I, what, I'm, what I've worn today to make it nice and special? It's opposite day, so I've worn all my clothes backwards. Now, a sweater doesn't look very good backwards, but you can probably tell from my feet that... Oh yeah, it's opposite day. <laughs> this is really uncomfortable and I, I'm gonna change. I hope you don't mind. Give me a second. And uh, done. Thank you so much. This feels so much better. Well, here's the thing we're talking about today. Today, we are talking all about opposites. And if you don't know, the opposite of something is the complete reverse. So for example, if I were to look up, the opposite of that would be down. If I were to say hot, the opposite of that would be cold. If I were to say light, the opposite of that would be dark. Opposites are the inverse. And this whole series, we're talking about how Jesus said things and he asked us to do things that seem to be the opposite of what we would initially think of. And so I have one for you. I want you to think, I'm going to say the word and I want you to think of the opposite. All right, you ready? Friend. What's the opposite of friend? If you said the word enemy or if that came to your mind, you would be absolutely correct. See, an enemy, they are the opposite of a friend. They don't want the best for you, and they're a lot of times at odds with somebody. So in a lot of movies, you have enemies, like for example, Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader. They are enemies clashing against each other. You may have the Avengers and Thanos. They're also clashing against each other. Or even in Frozen, you have our fair queen Elsa and the, the guy with the, the fair hair that goes onto his face like that. I can't remember his name. He's the, he's the enemy in that story. And so what are we talking about today? Well, here's this. In Luke 6, verse 27 to 36, Jesus says, love your enemies. Do good to those who persecute you, those who do evil to you. So what does he mean? How can we do that? Jesus, this sounds so opposite. Like, I'm all for loving my friends and family. Those are people that are easier for me to love. But what about my enemy? What does that look like? Well, to dive into this, why don't we take a look at Grow TV and see what they have to say. Take a look and I will see you in just a second. Well, goodbye to you little tofu nuggets. It's not me, Carl. Welcome to Opposite Day and welcome to Grow TV. It's good to see y'all. Now today, I have something very special planned. I need your help in my super duper secret mission. A mission so secret that even speaking it can bring so much danger to myself. Do you accept this mission? Yes. Perfect. The mission is this. Get back at my bowl of O'Shea. Now hold on, hear me out. Everywhere I go, there's this big dude named O'Shea and he just likes to push my buttons. You ever have someone like that? Someone that just knows how to grind your gears, really knows how to burn your toast, really just mashes your taters. Well, that's this guy. That is O'Shea the bully. And I need your help getting back at him, all right? Hey, Carl, I just got your text about uh, O'Shea. Are you, are you okay? Uh, yeah. Really? Because it sounded kind of bad. Never better. I mean, he tricked you into eating a gallon of dog hair. <laughs> That's enough, Andy. I mean, everyone saw it. Your Mama saw it. It's all over the internet. Please close your mouth. Believe it or not, it was your Mama who actually sent me the video. Enough! Come on, man. Jeez. Now, I just need to figure out what to do with my worst enemy. Oh, yeah. And speaking of that, I actually got a letter with our big idea on it, but it's missing the last word. Again? What's it say? It says, our enemies help us learn to blank. Our enemies help us to learn blank? Huh? How about our enemies help us learn to fight? I don't think so. All right. How about our enemies help us learn to conquer? King of the world! Ah! Conquer! Not quite. How about our enemies help us? Carl, it's opposite day. And? And that means that the last word of our big idea might be the... Beans? No, not beans. Opposite. It might be the opposite. So instead of fighting or conquering our enemies, the opposite of that would be... Be? Do not say beans. Uh, I'm not sure. Okay, well, let's look at what the Bible says. All right, let's do it. All right, I'll be reading out of Luke chapter 6. Here we go. During the time of Jesus, Jerusalem was ruled by the Roman Empire. The Romans had taken over Jerusalem, 
and they made life very hard for many Jews. The Roman emperor made the people worship him instead of God, Roman tax collectors took people's hard-earned money, and Roman soldiers bullied anyone who disagreed. Throughout Jerusalem, the Romans were viewed as an enemy. They were hated. One day, Jesus sat down on a hillside, surrounded by his disciples and a large crowd of people. Many of those listening had seen firsthand how mean the Romans could be, and they wondered what Jesus would say about people like the Romans. Would he say people should hate their enemies? Would he say they should get even with them? Much to their surprise, Jesus said that they should love their enemies. Jesus explained what this love looked like by giving some examples. First, he told the people, if someone slaps you on your right cheek, let them slap your left cheek as well. This would have been very hard for the people to accept, but Jesus wanted everyone listening to understand something very important. Love doesn't take revenge. Love doesn't hurt others who have caused harm. Jesus gave the people a second example. If anyone brings you to court to take your shirt, let them have your coat as well. The person's outer coat was very important in Jesus' time. For example, the poor would use their coats as blankets to sleep in on cold nights. But Jesus wanted the crowd to understand that true love comes from a deep trust in God. Love will give away things of incredible value, even to those who don't deserve them. Next, Jesus said, If a soldier makes you carry his gear for a mile, carry it for two miles. According to their law, Roman soldiers could force people to carry their heavy gear for one mile. People hated having to do this, and they would never think of going an extra mile. But Jesus taught the crowd that love always serves others, even enemies, with a happy heart. Love always goes above and beyond, doing more than expected. Jesus was letting the crowd know that they should love others the way that God loves them. Jesus explained that God was like a good father in heaven. God shows his goodness and love to everyone, even those who don't deserve it. Jesus reminded the crowd that God gives his very best gifts, like warm sunshine and nourishing rain, to everyone, good and bad. Jesus asked the crowd to love each other in the same way. Later on a cross, Jesus would become the perfect example of God's love. There, people hurt and insulted him, but he didn't take revenge or get even. Instead, Jesus gave away the most valuable thing of all, his own life, as a payment for our sins. Our Savior went the extra mile so that we could be free from our sin and live with God in heaven forever. God loved us first, even when we were sinners. It's amazing! And this is how Jesus says we are to love others. This is not okay! It's like my anger tells me to do something, and Jesus tells me to do the act. exact opposite. Huh. I guess so. See, Carl, our instincts tell us to hate our enemies and to despise those who mistreat us. But God tells us to love our enemies. But why? Why do I have to do the opposite of how I feel? Well, because Jesus did it for us. Huh. Well, I guess you're right. Jesus chose to love those who mistreated him and hated him. Even those who denied him were given love and forgiveness. <sighs> Well, Andy, I think this is going to be tough. It might and probably will be, but I promise you it's going to be how you grow closer to Jesus. And it'll be how you show others that they are loved and valued as well, even if they aren't showing you love at all. All right, so Jesus asks us to love our enemies, to love people who we don't get along with. Well, why does he do that? It's because of this. Another part of the Bible, it says that Jesus, that God, he loved us when we were enemies of God. See, when you or I, we, we make decisions that are anti what God wants, we make this wall, kind of like this. We end up putting a wall up between us and God. Imagine God's on the other side of this. When I yell at somebody because I'm mad, well, I put up this wall. When I lie to my parents, I put up this wall and I can't do anything to take this wall down. And so what happens is even though God didn't put up this wall, he sees it and he wants to be with me so much that he takes this wall. You know what he does with it? Instead of being on me to try and take it down, God takes the wall and he just, he knocks the wall down himself. 
Here's the thing. If you have accepted Jesus into your heart, you know that sometimes you make mistakes. You do this thing called sin, but that God loved you anyway. And because of that, now we can go and love others. The reason we are called to love others is because when we do, we show everybody around us who Jesus is. We show them that He loves people even when they make mistakes, even when they have built their own walls apart from us. And so when somebody makes their own wall against you, when they have a bad day and they start yelling at you and they have their own wall, our job then is not to help put this wall back up or it's not to yell back at them, but it's to take a second and say, whoa, God, how can I love them even though this is happening? So how do we do it? What does it look like? Does it look does loving my enemies look like making a Valentine's Day card and giving it to them or showing up to them with a whole bunch of roses and be like, hey, I know that you were mad at me yesterday and you yelled at me and it wasn't cool, but here's some roses. Have it. Enjoy. I love you. Not quite. I mean, maybe it is, but I don't think that's the only way it works. What loving our enemies looks like is just to take a minute when someone does something wrong to you, instead of acting out of our own way, we do the opposite and we say, Jesus, help me to love like you did to me. And you take a second and you wait for God to be with you. And then you respond the most and the best way you can in love. But I can hear you, I, but I can hear you thinking this. Kieran, that's hard. That's really hard. And you know what? You're actually right. And actually, you're more right than you know. It's actually almost impossible to do these things. It's impossible to have somebody yell at you and then for you to be like, you know what, it's okay, I'm so sorry to hear that. When someone yells at me, I, my first reaction is to be like, don't you talk to me like that, how dare you? But the way of Jesus is different because even though it's impossible on my own, here's the good thing. God never asks me to do anything on my own. God is always with me. And no matter where I go or what I do, he helps me to do anything. Remember who we're talking about here. This is Jesus. Jesus is the man who came to earth and he helped dead people come back to life. He walked on water. He turns water to wine. He's the one who makes a person who's paralyzed able to walk again. He does the impossible every single day because Jesus, he's God. And Jesus lives inside of you. And so if you feel like something's impossible, know that with you on your own, it probably is. With me on my own, it would be impossible to say, yes, oh, I'm so sorry when someone yells at me. But because I have Jesus, I can take a second, pray, say, Jesus, I need your help, and then listen to what he has to say. I don't have to react on my own because I know that I can love others well. So, would you let me pray with you today to help you know that God is with you in everything that you do? Why don't you close your eyes? And praying is just a way that we talk to God. So let's close our eyes to help us focus in on who God is right now. God, thank you so much for who you are, for the fact that God, you help us to do the impossible. And that God, even if it's difficult, even if it feels wrong, that you help us to love our enemies you help us to love people who are enemies with us, who we don't get along with. So Jesus, help me. Help me to love like you this week, even to people who are enemies of me. Even to people who choose to be mad and angry at me. So Lord, help me and be with me this week. Give me ideas on how to love. In your name we pray. Amen. I hope you learned a little bit more about what Jesus is like and how his opposite way of living is actually the best way of living. Why don't you go ahead and read this chapter of Luke with your family? It's Luke 6, verses 27 to 36. I promise you, you're gonna love it and that Jesus will be with you as you read it. That's all for us today. Have fun, be safe, make good choices, and we hope to see you next week, whether in person or online. So, see you then.